Hey, have, um, have you ever tried to quit smoking? I don't mind how I'm dressed. It's, it's a new company dress code. No, 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 I'm, I'm not here to sell you anything. Just listen to my story and you make your own decision. Had to be about a year ago this fall that I decided to quit. It was because of the usual reasons anyone quits. My wife, Audrey, and I were hard up for cash. Even we were both unemployed at the time, and she was pregnant. We both decided to make some sacrifices to save money in preparation for the arrival of the new baby. She sold off some of her jewelry to a local pawn shop and started looking for a stay-at-home job. I really cracked down on finding myself a real full-time job and obviously decided to give up smoking as well. I had tried a few times before with various methods. Cold turkey was first, the Nicorette gum, and of course the patch. And to tell you the truth, they are all full of it. I even tried that dumb fucking e-cigarette piece of shit. Newsflash! Save your money. So, this time I figured that I would see my doctor about it and he would prescribe me some pills or something. I know. You don't have to say it. You were unemployed and you wanted to go to a doctor about this? How the fuck are you going to pay the bill or get the prescription, dipshit? Well, we have enough left around to cut for this with the idea that it would save us money in the long run. Don't worry, I got lucky. So, I called up the doctor's office and set up an appointment for 11.15 the next morning. I was going to quit smoking in the first place, so I held off on having any before I left. I hopped onto my piece of shit, 1992 Ford Tempo, and off I went. I strode into the office sometime around 11 o'clock, and there was no one in line for the front desk and no people in the waiting room. Bonus! I wasn't in the particular mood to sit and listen to some asswipe complain about his life in the ever-popular No matter how loud I talk, you can't hear me when I'm on my cell phone volume, or watch some teen mom with a lack of parenting skills let her kid rip apart the magazine rack today anyway. I stood at the front desk for a solid 10 minutes. As it turns out, the receptionist was asswipe with the phone. So I stared at her and she held up the give me a minute, I'm on the phone here finger. She giggles at her conversation and continues talking. I bit my tongue and tapped my finger on the desk. After a while, the receptionist decided that I was worthy of her attention. Can I help you? She asked in a really bitchy tone that made me want to grab her by the neck, squeeze until her head popped. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have an appointment to see Dr. Matson for 11.15. Name? Mark. Uh, Mark Skransky. Mr. Skransky, let me see here. Ah, there it is. For 11.15, you say? Yeah, that's the one. Well, then, there seems to be a few issues here. Go figure. What could they be? Well, number one, you're late for your appointment. Bull! I got here 15 minutes early to fill out paperwork. You were on your damn phone. Sir, don't start with an attitude or I'll have to escort you off the property. I have no proof of when you arrived. You should have signed in on the sheet. You saw me standing here. (sighs) Never mind. I'll just sign in. Now, can I see the doc? Well, that would be the other issue. Since you were here late, you missed your appointment and Dr. Matson is booked tight for the rest of the day. Really? You're shitting me. No one is here. Sir, I warned you, and I will not do it again. Insurance? Ha! I wish. Ha is right. Just sign in and find a seat. I will see what I can do. I grabbed the pen and scratched my name into the sign-in sheet under time I wrote 11 a.m. as large as I could. I also happened to notice that no one else had signed in that day. Book my ass. I muttered under my breath. Believe it or not, the dumb cunt went right back to yakking on the phone. This is fantastic. Fan-fucking-tastic, I muttered a little louder. She glared at me for a second and then turned back to her oh-so-important phone conversation. I smirked a little and sat there with my proverbial thumb up my ass. I checked my watch and figured a magazine might help me pass the time. The magazine rack was full of your typical doctor's office reading material, parenting magazines, men's health, along with assorted other crap. I picked up a motor trend and flipped through the pages. Nothing was worth spending any time reading, so I put it back. The wait was almost unbearable. Dull office white walls, the television droning in a repetitive loop of health news, racks of pamphlets trying to convince people to ask for certain prescriptions. If your ass hair grows faster than you can keep up with, ask your doctor about bullshit a 
I was counting the dots on the ceiling tiles, wondering if I should just reschedule for another day when I heard... Mr. Scrumskin! Mark Scrumskin? Scranskin. I replied as I checked my watch and looked up to see a tall, slender figure standing in the doorway. He was almost a sickly kind of skinny, although he didn't look old, I couldn't really put my finger on the age. He had short gray hair sticking out from a red-orange hairpiece. His eyes were slightly sunken, his skin was pale, almost white. He wore a pair of burnt orange slacks with tan dots and a long white lab coat. My jaw dropped at the sight of this odd-looking man. Dr. Matson? I asked. It's not like I ever spent any time at the doctor's office, and the stun of seeing this guy completely forced any idea of what Dr. Matson actually looked like out of my head. No, unfortunately, the good Dr. Matson has just left the office due to a very sudden illness, he replied in somewhat hoarse, raspy voice. Ironic, I thought in my head. Well, the receptionist said that he was booked for the day. Are you taking his patients? Only some of them. I've just transferred to this office from Newport, Rhode Island, and Dr. Matson has graciously offered for me to take some of his patients until I have established myself with this office. Uh, patient allowing, of course. <laughs> All right, I guess. I was a bit hesitant, but my impatient side got the better of me. Right, then, uh... Mr. Scroffs, uh, Mr. Skarfsky? It's Skransky, I replied. I heard the receptionist holler something as the door shut behind me, but I figured it was part of her phone conversation, or maybe someone else interrupting it. I followed him into a small examination room. It had the normal examination table and a few posters of various body parts with medical terms and arrows pointing out the different parts that made up whatever the poster was supposed to be of. Ah, it says here it's been a while since your last checkup. Uh, yeah, lack of funding, if you catch my drift. That's not really what I came in for, though. Oh, unfortunately, I can't help you until you've had a physical. Uh, well, you see, that's kind of the problem. I, I don't really have insurance to cover this visit, and I am on a tight budget. I see. Well, maybe we can make some sort of payment arrangement afterward? Uh, I guess. Just try to keep it cheap, Doc. Alright? I, I never did catch your name. At the same time, I thought to myself, my wife is going to fucking kill me when she sees this bill. But it's, it's for my own good. Oh, I am sorry. You can call me Dr. Winston. Alright, Doc Winston. Uh, let's get this over with. He continued with a quick examination. He checked blood pressure, weight, turned my head and cough, so on and so forth. Last, he checked my breathing. He held the cold stethoscope on my chest and asked me to breathe deeply. Are you a smoker, Mr. Scrumsky? Listen, it's Scransky. You know what? Just, just call me Mark. Yes. That's why I'm here, actually. Oh, is it? Well, that seems to be the issue. I explained to him the situation, and his big gray eyes looked right through me as I spoke, as if reading into my soul. It was rather unsettling, but I put it off for the time being. Well, you are in luck, he said as he stretched a tight-lipped grin across his white, fragile, paper-like figures. It just so happens that we have a chance of a lifetime. There is a newly developed medication for just such an individual as yourself. Come on, Doc, really? Brand new? That means it's going to cost what? Both arms and a leg? What are we talking here? No, no, you... You misunderstood. This medication has just entered the testing phase before it's released to the general public. They currently will be paying volunteers the sum of $1,500 to test it and report back on the results. Don't worry. It's been cleared for human testing. Really? They'll pay me to take their pills just to see if it works or not. Oh, not just that. But since you are my first patient and I have been closely involved with the development of the medication, I'm willing to waive your bill for today's visit if you agree to involve yourself with this trial. It, it seemed like a win-win. I mean, I would get my appointment for free, along with the prescription I came for, and on top of all, I'm getting paid. I was in. All right, sounds good. What are the terms of payment, and uh, what do I need to do? Well, it is a 15-day trial. Each day we will meet, and you will describe to me what the prescription is doing to you. I will pay you $100 per report. 
There are two types of pills. This box, he held up a red and orange box, is what you will take three times daily. First thing in the morning, exactly halfway through your day, and just before sleep. He held up a second box. It was black and gray. In this box is what you shall take any time you have the urge to smoke. You shall continue to smoke through the trial, and especially if you take a pill from the black and gray box. In fact, I will provide you with cigarettes as well throughout the trial. He handed me a coupon booklet that had to cover at least three cartons worth of cigarettes. If I keep smoking, how will this work? Believe me, on the 15th day of the trial, you will no longer want to smoke. Really? Could this get any better? The only stipulation is you absolutely must complete the trial. Yeah, yeah, I know. If I don't finish it, you won't pay me. I get it. I turned to walk out. The receptionist met me at the door to the waiting room. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Excuse me? You can't just go bursting into the examination area of a doctor's office. You're lucky I don't call the authorities. Listen, lady. You, you must have had the phone further in your ear than I thought. The doc called me in. <sighs> he gave me a free examination, a prescription, and some coupons, and now I'm leaving. I'm calling the police. The doctor has been on his lunch break and will not see patients until 1245. Whatever, lady. I'm sick of this shit. I'm out of here. And with that, I left. That was more than enough drama for one day, so I jumped in the tempo with my loot, fired it up, and went to pull out of the office parking lot. I noticed the clock on the car read 12.07. No way the visit was that short. I didn't go into the examination room until 12.05. Even the clock doesn't work in this piece of shit car. My watch ran the same. Ugh. Must have read it wrong earlier then. I made a pit stop on the way home, picked up a couple packs of Marlboro Reds. I figured if smokes are free, I might as well get decent ones. Screw this USA Gold palm oil shit. And I walked into the house, put my dog, Goose, on the leash, then walked out the back to have my first smoke of the day. Before I lit it up, I popped one of the gray and black pills, then enjoyed my smoky goodness. Audrey saw me out back and decided to see what was going on. Hey honey, I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Did you make your appointment? Yeah, I got in. New doctor is a hair on the odd side, and the receptionist was batshit crazy, but I, I got it done. Then why are you smoking? I thought you went there to get something to help you with that. Yeah, I did, but don't worry about it. He gave me these. I tossed her the box of pills. Great. How much did they run us? Including the full checkup, or just for the pills? You had to get a checkup too? Jesus Christ. I don't want to know. No, go ahead. Guess. It's not as bad as you think. I'm going to say $500. Way off. Try again. Come on. I don't want to play this game right now. Just tell me. All right. Fine. The appointment was free. And the doctor's going to pay me $1,500 to go on those pills for 15 days. And all I have to do is meet up with him once a day and tell him how it's going. And he'll give me $100 a day. Plus... He gave me coupons for free smokes while I'm on this trial. He told me to keep smoking like I normally do. Just take the pills, red and orange, three times a day, in the black and gray, every time I want a cigarette. Well, this is kind of odd. But if we're getting paid for it, I guess it's worth a try. She turned the box over in her hands and started making a remark about the pills, but her words started to sound... distant. My ears began to rush, and my head was swimming. The world blurred in and out of focus, and then... Nothing. I woke up with my wife standing over me. Phone in hand with 911 on the other end. Oh wait, he's waking up now! Thank God, I'm not sure, hold on one second. Honey, are you okay? You passed out for a minute. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. My head hurts a bit, but I think I'm good. Good. They're sending an ambulance now. No, no, oh no. Uh, no ambulance. I'm fine. It, it was, it was just a, a head rush. Do you know how much an ambulance ride costs? Tell, tell them to, to call it off. Don't. Give me the phone. I'll do it. Oh, hello, nine one one. A woman's voice responded. Sir, can you tell me what happened? No, no, don't, don't worry. Uh, call, 
Call back your ambulance. I, I just had a bad head rush. Sir, I need you to confirm your condition before I can do that. No, no big deal. I just... I passed out. I'm fine. The voice on the phone changed slightly. It deepened and gained a hoarse quality. You took them, didn't you? The pills. <laughs> Ashes. And then static. Sir? Sir, are you still there? Said the operator who was now returning to normal. What, what, what did you just say? Sir, are you on a cellular phone? Our connection seems to be bad. No. What did you say about the pills and ashes? Sir, I did not say anything about pills or ashes. Did you take something that caused you to pass out? No, uh, it must have been the static. I, I misheard you. I, I swear, I am fine. All right, sir. I will recall the ambulance and alert them that it was a false alarm, but if this happens again, I would advise you to seek medical attention. I'll do that, he said, and hung up the phone. I wiped some drool from my mouth onto my sleeve and noticed it was black. I neglected to mention it to my wife. She had had enough stress for one day, and I think I did as well. The rest of our day was rather uneventful. As I was getting ready for bed, thoughts of the voice on the phone and the strange doctor raced through my head. Just a strange day, I thought to myself. I picked up the boxes of pills and looked at them. There were no labels on the boxes. In fact, no words at all. Just a cardboard box that was red on one half and orange on the other. It was the same with the black and gray box. I pulled one of the blister packs of pills out of the red and orange box, popped one of the pills out of the foil, rolled it around in my hand. It didn't look like any other pill I had ever seen. Not that I usually spent very much time studying pills in the past, but the pill was a clear casting and a red liquid inside. Another orange liquid swirled around inside the pill but didn't mix. Kind of like oil and water. The pill emitted a faint glow. It's fifteen hundred dollars, I thought to myself. And swallowed the pill. The next morning I awoke in a cold sweat. The black liquid was at the corner of my mouth again. I've never been one to remember my dreams, but there was a definite feeling of dread. My wife stayed in bed and I went through my normal morning routine with the addition of taking my new pill. I brushed my teeth, set up coffee, and went out back for my morning smoke and let goose out. I pulled out the black and gray pills again. I had taken a few the day before but hadn't really stopped to look at them. After looking at the other ones last night, I decided to take a better look at these as well. Now, they were similar to the red and orange ones except these ones were gray and black with swirls. Rather than emitting light, these are completely devoid of any. It was almost as if they sucked the light from around them, or they admitted darkness, whichever way you want to look at it. I noticed the dog had stopped walking and was staring at me with his hackles raised. Goose? What's your problem? Of course, he didn't respond. He just remained tense. Probably a squirrel or a chipmunk behind me or something. I went to pop the pill in my mouth, and Goose let out a loud bark, which startled me into dropping the pill on the ground. Goose, being the curious dog he was, ran up to it and gave it a sniff. He let out a loud, painful yelp, and then took off across the lawn. Really, Goose? God, you're such a pussy. He was hiding in his doghouse. I just shook my head, picked up the pill, swallowed it, and had my smoke. It seemed each time I took them, the head rush that accompanied them got less... And less. So I chalked it up to the side effects. The black liquid had to be from the pills as well. Um, I finally convinced a reluctant goose out of his doghouse and went back in the house. The rest of the morning went on as usual. Audrey rolled out of bed around 10.30. We browsed various websites for jobs, flipped through the classifieds, and watched some TV. And just then, the doorbell rang. 
When I checked the clock, it was around 12.05. I wasn't expecting anyone, so I went to the door, prepared to tell some salesman or Jehovah's Witness to go eat a dick. I peeked through the blinds, and lo and behold, it was Dr. Winston. What the fuck is he doing here? I opened the door. Hey, Doc, uh, can I help you? Mark, if I'm correct, I came for our daily meeting and for your report. Oh. Oh, uh, that's right. Um, I almost forgotten about that. I didn't expect you to show up at my house. Uh, did we schedule a meeting? I said a meeting once a day, correct? Yeah, yeah, I, I guess you did. But I kind of figured that you would want to do it at a more convenient time at your office. It has been 24 hours, has it not? What time would be more convenient for... An unemployed gentleman such as yourself. Fair enough, Doc. Uh, so, a report. I didn't type anything up. Can I just tell you about it? That would be all that is required. Well, I suppose. Just some minor side effects. Uh, especially from the gray and black pills. They gave me one hell of a head rush at first, but then they're, um... They're not as bad after each time I take them. Also, I noticed, um... Some black liquid from my mouth every now and then. Normal. All normal. Everything seems perfectly in order here, then. Continue your regimen, and I will meet you again tomorrow. He handed me a hundred dollar bill. Turned. And left. Who is it? Audrey said from behind me. Uh, it was the doc just stopping by for our meeting. Where? I kind of want to see this weirdo. Uh, he just left. Here. Throw this in your purse. I handed her the one hundred dollar bill. Honey? You didn't talk to anyone. You opened the door, stood there for a second, and then I walked up. <laughs> I didn't feel like arguing. You really shouldn't argue with a pregnant woman. I went to take my midday pill and left it at that. That evening, Audrey and I were watching the news, and there was a report that caught my attention. In other news, unidentified body was found in a doctor's office at 15th South Main Street in Marlboro. Police suspect the individual died sometime around noon yesterday and was placed in the office shortly afterward. An investigation has begun and limited details have been released to the public. The cause of death appears to be a severe burn. The individual's burns reduced the body to ash. If anyone has any information pertaining to the investigation, please contact your local authorities. Mark? You were there when that happened. No, no way. Uh, there must have gotten a, 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 bl a bum scoop. I mean, the, their times are wrong or something. The only people at the office were me, the bitch behind the front desk, and Dr. Winston. You don't think? No, the, I mean, the dude was strange, but not murderer strange. Where was Dr. Madsen during all this time? I guess he was sick. It took a half day. The Dr. Winston was covering for him. But then again, the receptionist did say that he was on lunch break. I never saw him. Sounds a little suspicious to me. Maybe I should call it in. Uh, I, I don't really want to get involved. There might be a reward, she replied as she picked up the phone. After she made the call, it wasn't ten minutes before the cops were at our door, dragging me down to the station as a possible homicide suspect. I explained it all to them, and they corroborated the story with the receptionist. Eventually, they let me go. Although, they never were able to contact Dr. Winston or Dr. Matson. The next few days went along as smoothly as could be expected. Audrey noticed that I was actually smoking more, and I did bring it up in one of my meetings. Dr. Winston showed up exactly at 12.05 every day. All I was able to get out of the dock was, That's perfectly normal. Just continue with the trial, and report to me every day. I started feeling angry a lot, and I developed a strange gray spot on my finger with a, a red ring around the outside of it. The spot grew by the day, and was accompanied by a burning sensation. The doc just said, Good. That means it's working. I was starting to remember parts of my dreams as well. They were getting worse and worse. Every morning, I woke up feeling deeply disturbed. The black liquid was always seeping from my mouth. It tasted burnt and ashy. 
It had to be day seven of the ordeal that Audrey asked me to stop the trial. I refused, of course. I was actually craving the pills more than the cigarettes, and I was only smoking as an excuse to take them. If you don't stop taking these pills, I'm going to leave. I don't like what they're doing to you. Babe, don't do this to me. We need the money. But look at you! You look like hell! All you do is holler at everyone! I can't stand to be near you! This needs to stop. We need the money! Don't you blame this shit on me. No, I'm not. Just stop yelling. I'm just asking you to duck out of the program, that's all. We'll be fine. I need you to do this for me. I may have been angry, but I did still have a bit of judgment. Fine! I will talk to the doctor tomorrow. Maybe I can convince him that his shit is not fucking working. That night, I vividly remembered my dreams. I was standing in the darkness. That The black was so thick that I could feel it pressing down on me. If I had a flashlight, I doubt that it would have, it would have lit up four feet in front of me. I reached into my pocket and pulled out two pills, one glowing red and orange, one black and gray that was drawing the light from the other pill and pushing it out the other side. In a thick smoke, I downed the pills and a cigarette appeared in front of me. Just above the filter, the word Matson was printed in small red letters. A flame appeared on the tip my finger and I lit my smoke. As I took a drag, the flame rose higher into the air and grew larger. I took a second puff and the distinct scent of burning flesh washed over me. The flame came to a stop and the light started to shine over me. I noticed the ground was a thick black liquid. I continued to smoke my cigarette and noticed it had changed. What I now held in my hand was a human finger. Ash covered the fingertip. I was smoking it from the severed end. I wiped the black liquid from my mouth and spit it on the ground. I finished smoking the finger calmly. And woke up. What the fuck just happened? I yelled, breathing heavily, and the black liquid covered my chin. What's, what, what, what's the matter? I'm, I'm gonna beat the shit out of that prick. I'm, I'm gonna fucking shoot him. Who? Calm down. You're not shooting anyone. The doctor. <laughs> The doctor, he's, he's fucking killing me. That, that's it. I'm, I'm getting out of this shit today. I got out of bed and started my morning routine as best as I could, shaken by the dream. I took Goose out, but he only ran and hid in his doghouse, occasionally peering out at me, growling at me. Stupid fucking dog. I was now wishing that I could take a pill and have a cigarette, but I fought the urge. By 9.30, I was shaking from the need. Shortly after, the police showed up to take me for a ride. I angrily agreed and allowed them to bring me to the station. I, I didn't do shit. We know that, Mr. Skransky. Then why am I here? Sir, we've yet to find this Dr. Winston. Has he tried to contact you? Actually, I, I meet with him once a day, just, just afternoon. Really? Mr. Skransky, why was this not brought up to our attention beforehand? I just figured that you had, you had gotten a hold of him. Gotten a hold of him? We haven't found a record of his transfer to this state, or any proof of his existence at all. We can't find any birth records, any social security number, work history, nothing. Never mind actually speak with the man. Well, well, I don't know what to tell you. We believe you can find out who this man really is. Now, how the hell am I going to do that? You said you meet with him once a day. Perhaps you'd be willing to wear a wire. Wow. Fuck it. Why not? They set me up with a small digital recorder and a mic. Apparently, they were under the impression that the body belonged to Dr. Matson, and the only reason they thought the body was moved was, although it was nothing but a pile of ashes, nothing else in the room had any burn marks on it. How it was moved was completely unknown. Eventually... They sent me on my way. I decided to walk home to try to blow off some steam, and as I walked, I had the distinct feeling of being followed. I, I didn't look back. The next thing I knew, the world went fuzzy again, and the concrete came up to meet my face. 
I awoke with a foot on my back attached to a pair of burnt orange slacks with tan spots. I noticed my watch as well. 12.05. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, Mark. May I ask what you're doing? Just walking home. I stumbled to my feet, switched on the recorder while brushing myself off, hoping that he hadn't noticed. <laughs> The laugh was sinister and made my skin crawl. You can record anything I say. It won't help you. Listen, Doc, I'm done. I want nothing to do with this. Oh, Mark, I told you. You must finish the trial. Do you need more incentive? What if I add a zero to the end of our agreed-upon payment? No, no, no go there, Doc. This shit is killing me. My wife is threatening to leave me. My whole arm is gray now. I I'm always drooling this black shit. I, I don't give a damn what you say. It's not normal. Oh, Mark. What if I were to tell you, if you do not continue the trial, your wife will pay the price rather than yourself? The price... He never said anything about a price if I stopped the trial. You walked out before I could finish. A smile crossed his lips. Give me your gray arm. Out of fear and concern for my wife, I complied. Oh. Oh, this is coming along nicely. He said as he examined my arm. He raised it and let it drop and stopped the motion as it became parallel to the ground. My arm simply fell off as if he'd ashed a giant cigarette. There was no pain and the, the burning sensation was still there. My jaw dropped and I, I tried to scoop the remains of my limb up. No. No, how? How the hell did you do that? His laugh echoed in my ear. <laughs> I can put it back if you simply do as you're told. You can't do this to Audrey. You can't keep my arm. No, oh, I couldn't. Do you perhaps remember Dr. Matson? Bastard. The cops know it was you. Who the fuck are you? Sorry, Mark. That I cannot tell you. Are you going to cooperate or not? His eyes told me he wasn't lying. He would do it in a heartbeat. I regretfully agreed. Well... Take your medication and have a cigarette. Like a good boy. I left them at home. He reached in his pocket and pulled out a pill and a cigarette and watched as I smoked. With each drag, I watched my arm reform from the ashes but retain its ashen color. I could feel the burning travel to my chest and side. When I looked up from my arm, the dock was gone. Now what the hell do I do? There was nothing I could do. I arrived at home and Audrey met me at the door. I explained to her what had happened, the police station, the recorder, and my encounter with the doc on my walk home. I really think you're losing it, Mark. Those pills are driving you crazy. No, I, I have it all here. I held up the recorder. Guess I'd have to hear it to believe this story. I pressed play on the recorder, and the recording started. Test, test, said one of the officers that had briefed me. Good, it works. See, I'm not making this up. We turned our attention back to the recorder. Ugh, what the fuck? And then static. Then a low tone rose from the tiny speaker. The frequency steadily rose higher and higher. I jammed the stop button, but the tone continued to grow higher and louder until I dropped it to fall onto my knees and covered my ears. And then the recorder suddenly stopped. I looked up and Audrey was staring at me. What are you doing? You, you didn't hear that? He must have been able to mask his voice or, or some shit. I can't do this. You're going to take those pills until you, they fucking kill you because some figment of your imagination threatened to kill me. I need some time. I can't deal with this anymore. I'm leaving. Call me when you're back to normal. Really? 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 Don't do this to me! 
I can't stay, I told you. Off those pills, or I leave. Fine, fine, leave me. If I stop the pills, he will fucking kill you. Go check yourself in the mental health clinic. You need help. Yo, go fuck yourself! He's God! Go, get the fuck out! She packed her bags right then and there. We didn't say a word to each other. At least her and the baby will be fine, I thought to myself. The next morning, she called and asked if I had taken the money out of her purse and why I had used her purse as an ashtray. I told her I didn't know what she was talking about, even though I was fully aware and knew she wouldn't believe me anyway. She returned the next day to pick up the dog and some more of her belongings to the house in shambles, and that was... That was the last I saw of her. For days afterward, I followed the regimen of pills. My dreams became more vivid and disturbing, but I was getting used to them. I didn't sleep much anyway. The gray was now covering most of my body along with the burning sensation that accompanied it. The burning was now not only on the surface of my skin, but began to leach inward. I didn't bother to wipe the black liquid from my face anymore, seeing how it was now a constant stream. The anger that had started out like a nicotine fit had grown significantly. I couldn't smoke enough. I couldn't take enough pills to satisfy the urge. I needed something more. As I felt the anger swell within me, I began to vent on my surroundings. I tried to watch some TV and take my mind off everything that was happening. The news came on with, with an update of the investigation involving Dr. Winston, Dr. Matson, and myself. I couldn't stand listening to it. I ripped the plug out of the wall. I, I sat in silence. That was worse. So I turned on the radio, which began to play the same news story. Fuck this! I ripped the receiver off the entertainment center shelf, and I could hear the sizzling of electricity from where the wires had been pulled out of the back of the receiver. The entire house went dark, so I threw it into the TV screen. Dr. Winston still showed up every day. He no longer bothered with the doorbell. At this point, I lacked the ability for any intelligent conversation, so the doc would just watch and smile. And I hated him. And I wanted him dead. For some reason, each time I approached him to make an attempt on his life, he was able to stop me in my tracks. I, I, I redirected my anger at whatever was nearby. He would stop me and I, I would smash the windows or a, a kick a hole in the wall. I ripped cabinets from the kitchen wall and threw them at the sliding glass doors and... Why can't I fucking kill you? The doc only smiled at me. Fuck your reports! Mark. Mark. You have shown me all I need to see. I then tore the silverware drawer from the counter and grabbed a fistful of knives. The doc just shook his head at me and I could do nothing. I threw the knives at the wall and, and a few of them stuck. What do you want from me? What the fuck do you want? You will learn. Soon enough. On day 14, they came. The police, that is. I had never gone back to the station after they had set me up with a recorder. I imagine the state of the house tipped them off. Something wasn't right. There were two of them. The same two that had spoken with me. Mr. Skransky, are you home? Are you all right? Leave! Now! Sir, we just want to talk. Just come out, speak with us. They continued to walk into the house. They stepped out of the hallway into the kitchen. Are you sure you want me to come out? Yes, Mr. Skransky. Just come out. They gave them what they wanted. They were not expecting to see me in the state I was in. I could see the fear in their eyes when I rushed them. They made an attempt to draw their pistols, but my baseball bat slowed down the first officer's reaction time when I came in contact with a side of his head and the other decided that it would be a good time to leave. 
He made it to the broken sliding door when my knife entered his kidney, dropping him quickly to the floor. As he screamed in pain and bled out, I returned to the first officer, who was still unconscious, and dispatched him with a single stab in the chest. After pocketing one of the pistols, I dragged the bodies to the forest behind the house and placed them in a large pile of dry leaves, covered them in gasoline, lit them. I then proceeded to take two black and gray pills and stand over the burning bodies to inhale the smoke. I stood there until both bodies were reduced to ashes. The burning gray. And I, I surged and completed covering my entire body. I could feel it inside and out. I, I sat in the forest for another two days or so, popping pills, eating the ashes from the remains. When there was nothing left, I returned home in the early morning before the sun rose to a swarm of police cars. Most of the officers were inside, and the, the property was surrounded in crime scene tape. They must have shown up not long after I left. I, I don't believe they expected anyone to return to the scene, and it was relatively easy to walk up to the rear of the house following the shadows of the brush line and, and that ran along the yard. From a distance, I could see... I could see into the window the, f the flashlights of the officers and what I can only assume to be detectives shone brightly in almost every room. I watched them tag various parts of the house and snap pictures as they worked. I edged the house and ducked under windows towards the 200-pound propane tanks that ran the stove, fridge, water heaters, and dryers. <laughs> I picked up a piece of glass from one of the windows nearby and severed the rubber gas line. Then I lit a cigarette and placed it on the ground in the dry leaves next to the tank. As I backed away, I watched the leaves smolder. Eventually, the leaves ignited. I raised the pistol and waited. And when I saw the propane ignite, I took my shot and punctured the tank on the left-hand side, and the resulting explosion was enormous. I felt the shockwave knock me to the ground. As I regained my feet, I saw the destruction. The entire wall of the house was blown out the other side wall, were significantly damaged. Pieces off building lumber was strewn all around me. Among some of the nearby wreckage lay one of those officers. With a large piece of shrapnel lodged in his forehead. I grabbed one of his arms and pulled him out from underneath the flames. As I tugged him free, I could feel his shoulder pop from its socket and some of the tendons tear. And behind me, I could hear... I could hear all the screams and shouting. It made me smile. Gunfire came next. If they hit me, I didn't notice. I, I, I fired the remainder of the magazine from my pistol in the general direction of the, the other shots that they, they'd come from, but I, I was far too distracted with my new loot to notice if anyone was, was hit or not. I dragged the body back towards the forest. No one followed. I assumed. There, there were too many in need of immediate medical attention to send anyone after me, and perhaps, perhaps, they were calling additional backup to stage a manhunt. In either way, I was in the clear for the time being. I made my way deep into the forest, dragging the officer behind me. I walked for hours deeper and deeper into the dense section of the, the evergreen, thick enough to block out the sun. At one point, I saw the dock out of the corner of my eye. He smiled, and never been bigger, and when I finished finally dragging, I finally stopped, I began to gather small twigs, dry leaves, and pine needles into a pile, placed my victim upon his newly erected funeral pyre. Most of the man's clothes and skin had been torn away, a, a body being dragged through a forest has a nasty habit of catching on fallen branches and the like. His scalp had been reduced to a patch of blood matted hair stuck to his stuck to his exposed skull even even that had large cracks and dents from the occasional rock or log and I, I placed it down the the rest of the piles in the box and let the officer ablaze. The dizziness that returned in force and the world faded out of focus. A moment of clarity hit me. An understanding of, of what I had just done. And then I hit the ground. 
I don't know how long I was out. When I finally awoke, he was standing over me, with a bag in one hand and a smile on his face. He put his hand out to me to help me up, and as soon as I made contact with him, the rage left me. I could feel the burning subside. I looked around and saw four more bodies lying nearby. They were nothing but ashes, but retained their basic shape to an extent. My skin flaked off like the ash of a cigarette, exposing the stark white skin underneath. You have done it. The doctor smiled, very pleased with me now, but I could say nothing. You are aware that you cannot return now. They will hunt you. I simply nodded. He dropped the bag at my feet. I could see through the opening what looked to be a white lab coat and something burnt orange and tan. He held out his hand again, and in it was a pack of assorted cigarettes and a, a new kind of pill. This one was red and black and swirled furiously. Take the pill and choose. I quickly took the pill and felt a surge of energy through my body. I watched my skin flake off like the ash of a cigarette exposing stark white skin underneath. And I understood now. Like I said, I'm not trying to sell you anything. My apologies. I don't, I don't believe I ever introduced myself either. You may call me Dr. Doral. And I'm offering you the chance of a lifetime.